So it's day one of remote learning here in Victoria. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, I am a teacher in my other life. Um, in my other other life, I'm a modestly sized YouTuber. So making videos, doing online content, uh, doing remote teaching and coaching are things which aren't unfamiliar to me. In fact, I'd probably say that uh, I'm in the you know, top 5% of teachers who are technically prepared for this very unusual circumstance. So when I'm expressing uh, frustration, anxiety, uh, anger in some ways, it's not coming from a place of helplessness where I'm just whinging and lashing out at people who um, really had no control over this. But I'm sharing this, this vlog as a day one uh, record to help ourselves reflect, to first of all to let people know, like teachers, parents, students, that what's going on here is very unusual. But even people who perhaps are most suited to adapt to these circumstances um, are having trouble. And I'm hoping that in the next few days that the teething issues we have will be resolved, but I also want to have this as a record of what it was like to teach in a time when we couldn't go out of our homes, when the world was in a lockdown. And hopefully, if something happens again in the future, we'll be better prepared for it. I had a very restless night. Um, I hadn't left the house for 22 days exactly, so um, a lot of my initial feelings were were really hard because I haven't spoken to a person for you know, nearly a month. It's been me and a camera just kind of um, floating around and not really doing much. So suddenly having to run a whole day of classes online when you're interacting with a lot of people some, like, simultaneously was quite overwhelming. Um, that's probably the first thing. Then I went um, to back to school uh, in person to get a, a vaccination for the normal flu. And, you know, being around people again was very strange. Then I went shopping for groceries, and again, just the I don't know being being socially uh, deprived for a, a short period of time has kind of dulled my uh, responsiveness. So it was very easy to get triggered um, and overwhelmed by things happening around you and the remote learning platform certainly didn't help um, there were things which i fully expected um, but there are things which i found very difficult when i initially approached the idea of teaching remotely and this is back in the uh, the end of the first term um, I thought, well, if I had to do it right away, I'd use uh, the YouTube platform as a live streaming platform. It's the most um, robust system at the moment. I've already got it set up on my channel, so I'll switch over to my other teacher account and I'll just make a separate private channel where I can run my lessons and basically do what I'm currently doing. And to me, that seemed like a good idea. Um, what really uh, triggered me um, into a negative mindset, into a very anxious mindset, was the the uh, mandatory attendance. So students have to be recorded as attending class. And that wasn't what I thought we would do. I, th I thought in the move to remote and flexible learning, which is the phrase we've been using, that we would adjust our teaching schedule to be a lot more flexible, to factor in the need of students and parents who are at home who may not be able to commit to the lengthy time they're going to spend in front of a screen to teach and to learn, on both sides, teacher and student. Um, and I thought we'd be a bit more like, you know, have one or two online sessions and then have a task set for the week and work from there. But we were told immediately that we had to run every day, we had to run to a timetable, and we had to mark the role. So, you know, suddenly the role of the teacher on day one isn't just teaching, we have to do welfare checks, we have to do phone calls, we have to check in with every student, and, you know, it, it feels a lot less like teaching and more like tech support for 25 people at once, and doing it four, five, six times a day in a row, it's... Um, I mean, I think my, my peak was, you know, I, I got up at 9, set up the first conference call, 
um, you know, spent the first 15 minutes setting it up. In fact, I, I didn't do the phone calls, to be honest. I just put a Google form and um, I told the kids, look, to save me the effort, just do this first yourself. And if anyone's missing, I'll call them later. And um, everyone did it, so it, was, it wasn't a big problem. But, you know, that was the first day and that was already quite a, a drain. And then I had a bunch of U7 kids for a, um, a, a, a lounge class. And um, that was extremely tough. Uh, again, tech support most of the time, and we fixed all the problems. But it was very difficult because the learning environment at home is not a good one. Again, on both sides, on, on the teacher side and the student side. And then, um, you know, I, I was I trying to recharge for, you know, a bit, you know, go on social media, see how people were coping, kind of put my whinge out there. I just felt so um, upset. And um, and angry that you know, this is what we're doing right now. That um, I just wanted to kind of vent out, but I had five minutes because I was going live for my next class in the, in five minutes. So, um, but the turnaround for what we're doing is extreme and unrealistic. And it, it's easy to say now with retrospect because we weren't ready for this. You know, as much as. The media and you know, government will say, oh yeah, we spent the last few days preparing for this. We, we haven't been preparing for this. There's, there's been no plan, and it can't be the plan. It happened so quickly that there's no way for us to really implement something. So for the schools and the teachers already have platforms, and again, I'm one of the fortunate ones. It might have been a little easy for us, but we had no plan going in. The teachers weren't given a, a template on what to do, just examples of what you could do. So it's not it's not really a holistic approach. We're kind of um, doing a free for all where we are seeing what works. We're just throwing you know everything at the dartboard and seeing what sticks. Um, so I can't you know look back and say oh we could have done it better because we didn't have the time. We didn't have that preparation. Um, and there are things we need to fix going forward. But looking looking at it now, there are perhaps three things which really stuck out to me in the first day and things which if we ever have this thing again in the future and especially moving forward for the next few months that we need to address um, so that we remove these anxieties in the future. The first one is preparing the teachers to teach remotely. Uh, teaching is not a remote job. I know some people do so and again we have you know YouTubers who run educational channels who occasionally do similar things but teaching is different. Um, we we need to upskill teachers. Um, I'd say you know being a little cynical here but most teachers do not have a very high level of tech proficiency. Enough to open emails you know navigate through maybe um, Google Suite or some other learning platform run the basic management tools but anything beyond that is not within our teacher training. We're not training university to do this. We're not trained in schools, apart from schools which specialize in these programs. But the general school level of teachers is uh, very modest. So going to our online platform, people just throwing things out like, hey, try Zoom, try Google Meet, do this online conferencing. And they kind of fired off a silver bullet. But in reality, there's a lot more that needs to be done to implement this in a formal teaching environment. And when we don't have the, the protocols, the policies, especially on a uniform level across the school, then it gets very chaotic because one teacher is doing one thing on Zoom, then 45 minutes later someone else is doing something on Google Meet, then 45 minutes later someone's doing something else on, on YouTube. So it's a bit of a, a mess, you know, and it already is a mess in terms of normal teaching every day when we're going from class to classroom, but now we're going on a digital classroom to digital classroom. So it's, it's something which we weren't ready for. Um, we're making it up to go along, that's what we expect, but it's also something which is causing a lot of anxiety of our teachers, and I'm, I'm not um, immune from that. And that was something which I found extremely hard. Um, so that the, the lack of preparation for us, we're professionals, we're making it work, we're not being so cynical where you know, we're defeatists and this, this is the worst thing ever. I think there are definitely gains, I've had gains from it, from today, but there was definitely a lack of preparation in equipping teachers with the skill set in the time that we had to guarantee or to give us the best chance of entering the first day of remote teaching um, as smoothly as possible. 
The second part was um, not preparing the students. And again, like we didn't have time to prep the students. They were, you know, for us in Victoria, we had, we had the school holidays a week early to, um, uh, to, to flatten that curve. And the students weren't prepared on what to do. They were just told, bring everything home. Um, and subsequently, in the last few days, we've been sending out um, uh, notices and memos to parents to prepare them for online learning. And for the most part, this seems to be okay. So, like most of the students, from what I've encountered so far, have managed to turn up. I know other schools have reported a much lower percentage, like thirty percent. But we've been fairly fortunate. We've got most of our students uh, online and able to check in, and that's been okay. The issue, though, isn't so much that um, the infrastructure isn't there, but more that the students are not familiar with the online learning environment. That's to be fair, because nobody learns online. Right? We're, re we're learning class. But there are unique problems with um, online learning, which I, I thought would happen, um, but there also need to be more awareness and more consistent policies and practices across the board. Um, things like being aware of other people if you're doing a conference call, being aware of uh, people in the call. Um, you know, we had a pretty funny lesson first period where, um, it, you know, when you're playing like, online gaming, for example, it's just you and five or ten other people, so it's pretty easy to just talk over each other. But when you have 25 people plus a teacher trying to teach something or learn something, and you're talking over each other on a microphone, it's something which you need to be aware of that, and I don't expect you to know this, but um, when you're involved in a conference call, you need to have microphone discipline. Um, obviously, as the, the teacher in charge, I can meet people, but I can't always do that when I'm trying to explain something. I'm also keeping my eye on the screen, saying, all right, whose uh, microphone is on, and I'll mute them. It's kind of playing whack-a-mole. And people legitimately need to talk, but you know, it's it, there's no protocol for that. People don't know that. Um, things like eating, freaking hell, we had someone eating noodles, going, <laughs> yeah, for like five minutes for the whole thing, and it was so, you know, it, it's, it was fun the first time around, but, you know, it's that, that awareness is something which, we, you know, we didn't teach, and it's something we have to, um, to acquire. Um, you know, things like background noise, you might be used for at home, but the microphone, especially for laptops, picks up everything. Again, unfortunately, I've got a decent microphone here for my recording, but for you know the students and most teachers, you just have a laptop microphone that picks up that picks up everything around you. So um, you know, just just that, that that awareness of how to operate in such an environment has to be taught. Um, we didn't prepare that, uh, and it's something which we have to remedy going forward. The third thing which I found really challenging was just having the timetable. And I mentioned this earlier that I didn't expect remote learning to be. Um, like yeah, you know, to be so strict. I thought flexible learning is all right. We can't. We obviously can't run a normal school day. Um, the activities will set have to be done independently. They um have to be uh they have to be achievable for students remotely. Will be available through a system and sometimes through a video call, sometimes through demonstrations or whatever we're doing. But I didn't expect to actually run a class every single day. That to me. My first feeling when I heard that was that's that's when my, I had my anxiety attack. Um, we had to mark the role every period. We had to um, run a class every period. I know why we're doing this too. We have to you know be aware of the well-being, the welfare of our students, um, and check in that they are going to school and they're not um, falling through the gaps. But as a teacher, just the thought of running six classes back to back in a day. Look, I, like I said, I do live streams on YouTube frequently. I run for an hour, hour and a half, two hours maybe. But I do it once you know, in the day, if not once a week. You know, I don't do it um, every single day. And to suddenly be in a situation where I'm supposed to run five or six of these back to back. You know, we do 45 minutes, flip to the next one, then flip to the next one, then flip to the next one. That's a gauntlet. You know, that's a really, really tiring gauntlet. I didn't think we would do this. So, again, just, just having to actually follow a normal routine. I know why we're trying to do this. It's trying to add a sense of normality for the teachers and the students so they can then know when to check in, what lesson they're doing, so they have some structure of learning. But it, is it realistic? Is it realistic to run to the exact school schedule? 
when you're not at school and just know the track, um, what you should be doing, you know, you know your timetable, but is it feasible? We know that teaching online is going to be different. It has to be presented in a different manner. It has. It will take more time to present things. It will take more time to get things done. So for us to you know be stuck with the same 45 minute schedule per period running it back to back six times a day that is it's not i don't think it's feasible we'll overcome these challenges but i think it's going to have a lot of people who are going to have more anxiety than i have because you know i, I might have certain ideas and how i'll deal with this but not everyone has the same flexibility and you know, to me, if I was to go back and rethink this with a bit more time, again, we have the the benefit of hindsight. Um, I, I would probably have implemented an alternate routine, an alternate timetable. We don't have forty five minute periods six times a day. That that's that's overload. It's overload for me as a teacher when I'm doing five or six of these in one day. It's overload for the students who have this six six times a day for those who match get it working. And six different conference calls from nine to three is insane. Um, I don't think many businesses run run this way. You know, I know, I know people have online meetings and all that, but you don't run six in a row like this, five five days a week. That's that's too much. And that that's why I feel we are we are failing at the moment is we are we are trying to set very high standards to teach remotely, um, but the reality is we're overloading everybody in the system. Um, it's been a very very high pressure spike, um, and again we're not factoring in things like time. Like one of the things with teachers, we just don't have time time to mark work, time to give feedback, time to check in with students, time to uh, prepare lessons. That's for normal teaching. Not online, remote teaching, just normal teaching. Now for remote teaching, we have to prepare the resources. We have to get our uh, online presentations prepared. Some of us are thinking of making videos. Oh, that's a luxury. You know, people have told me, oh, you know, you can do a five-minute video instead of doing a live call. Yeah, do you know how much a five-minute video takes? Like, I make five-minute videos. Five-minute videos take freaking two hours to make. I don't have two hours in a day to make a five minute video. It's not, it's not that easy. I'm not, I'm, I can't just sit in front here and just talk to a camera for five minutes. That, that, that's not sufficient for teaching. I have to, you know, prepare the props or the slides or the visuals and then script it and edit it. And that's not the same thing as teaching. And I get why that's advantageous. People who are doing this, fan bloody tastic. I really praise you. But my platform as a, as a YouTuber, as someone who does this as a side gig, it's not sustainable. If you're going to do this, you have to do so in a which is sustainable. If I get time, if I have that one class per week, I can dedicate time to make quality material for my class. But if I have to run six of these every day, there's no way, no way in hell I'm going to be able to maintain that. Because right now, it's 10 p.m. Right? I haven't slept since, um, I don't know, when I when I slept last night. I, I, I laid down this morning, but... You know, I had, a, I had a nap before, and I wanted to um, just sleep through the whole day. Once you finish your classes, I can recharge for tomorrow, but I need to get tomorrow's stuff done. And even making this video is sacrificing my, my work time, because, you know, when, when am I supposed to prepare my stuff? Because if I'm running classes all day, and doing stuff like, you know, welfare checks, marking work, and organizing work, when, when do I make this stuff? Well, when can I organize for tomorrow? And we still expect it to gain a mark work, be in touch with students after hours and email them and give them feedback and so on. And it's 10 o'clock, right? I can run to 1, 2, 3, 4 in the morning um, preparing things. And it's, you know, it's worthwhile. It's, it's all important stuff. But that's why I'm, I'm, I'm having the most anxiety about the timetable. And I've got a fairly lenient timetable because I do a lot of extra stuff outside of class. So I've got extra time for that. So I really do feel for the teachers who have a full load and have less um, preparation and proficiency than I do. So I know that that's that's how I felt for the first day. And the reason why I've made this is, you know, we, we tried to maintain routines. We, we told this is a mental health thing. And... Um, I've lost my routine. Um, you know, I've, I've maintained a continuous physical training um, routine for the last 10, 22 days, and this is the first day that I broke it because of teaching. Um, it broke me today. Um, I just couldn't do it. Um, and I know going forward, it's going to be I'll adapt to it quicker. I'll find a, a normal method of operation to make this work. 
but I know people who go through this but only see perhaps their own perspective as a parent, as a student, as their own teacher, and there, there'll be a lot of good news, no doubt. We want to have positives, but at the same time, we have to recognize the struggles which people are going through um, because they're real. Right? I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to have this illusion where everything is really fine because in the end, I'll go to school and say, yeah, all oh, these really great videos, they did really well, and I'm, I did a good job today, and I did. You know, I, 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 I met all my goals. Um, I've, I've produced quality content for my students. I, I enjoyed watching it again when I had time. I like oh, this is a real live stream. I really had fun, but I don't know the behind the scenes is is not it's not a, a pretty picture. And um, if we could be in this situation for the next six months, then we're in it for the long haul. But I hope that what I'm saying here re resonates resonates with you. Um, that you can appreciate what we're going through. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not complaining. I can't complain. There are people who've had it much worse than me. There are people who've been affected by um, the pandemic more than I have. People who are right now working on front lines who are, you know, in a much bigger risk than me. So I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm happy to be taking one and um, stay at home for the next six months, not talk to people ever again, and that sort of thing. If that's what helps people, I'll do that. But uh, I know that the, the education is also an essential thing, and all of us have been drawn into this. Um, with how prepared we are, we don't, you know, what we're seeing right now, and I just hope that what we learn from this is going to be effective. You know, that if if we have to survive like this for the next few months, then I hope that you know we can find um, a better way of operating. I hope that we become more flexible. Um, it's not optimal. I think we have to recognize that the way we run cannot be the same as what we do normally. If that means changing what we teach, changing when we teach it, changing how we teach it, we have to do that because we can't run a gauntlet like this every single day. That's how I feel anyway. Um, if you've been affected by this as a student, as a parent or a teacher, I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts and of course feel free to share this with people. I know many of us who are teaching probably feel like everyone's doing really well except for me and um, you want someone to connect to, relate to and feel free to share this with other people. I just want this to be out there because again we'll spin this as it was tough but we did a good job and I don't want to change the narrative but I also don't want to bury this um, underneath um, all the you know um, pats on the shoulder and the, it's a, it'll be okay you'll be in the end hanging there I, I appreciate the, the comments and the support but it's not helping now and um, it's easy to you know say from a different position what I should be doing and that's 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 great and it's, um, but it's not always feasible you know to to do that so anyway sorry for the the bad tone um i'm just you know a little bummed out you know uh, again a little overwhelmed by having to talk to people again after so much time in isolation um and again i'm going back in isolation i don't think i'll be leaving the house again for at least um 35 days um the only thing i need to go out for is like medication and um that's kind of a monthly thing so um, yeah, been 23 days, 24 days now, had one, one, um, excursion outside, and, um, we'll see how we go. I, I do hope you stay safe where you are, I do hope that this, uh, puts up some food for thought, and I hope that, um, if you're a situation like me, um, when you're teaching or you're learning from home, then I hope that you are acclimatizing well, and I do wish you the best in the months ahead.